Hi everybody, it's Mr. Beard and I'm coming to you from wild, wonderful West Virginia. And today I want to talk to you about how to identify birds by sound. And you might be asking yourself, why do we need to learn how to identify birds by sound? Well, if we go outside to collect data, uh, you'll find that a lot of times you don't see the birds, but you can hear them. And because you hear them, you know that they're there. And so it's a viable method of uh, bird identification to use sound, and that helps researchers because, let's face it, there's probably better than half the birds that are in the forest, if not more, you're not going to actually be able to lay eyes on. So let's talk a little bit how to, about how to identify birds by sound. So let's talk about vocalizations. Why are they important? Well, um, first of all, you have to understand that birds have very distinctive calls and songs. And if they didn't have distinctive calls and songs, we wouldn't be able to identify them. Uh, so it's it's really important that we learn these because, you know, more than half the birds that are in the forest that are around you at any given time, you aren't going to see. And so it's a viable method to be able to, to identify them if you're doing research. Now, there's two types of sounds. There's songs and they're calls. Songs are very complex. They're used by the songbirds or the passerines. And what they're used is to convey ownership of a feeding territory or a breeding territory, or they're used in courtship trying to, to attract a mate. And in most of these species, only the males sing, but that's not always the case. For example, northern cardinals, both the male and the female sing. Now calls are short, they're simple, could be a chip, could be a cheep. Uh, in the case of a chickadee, it's a chickadee dee dee. But these calls convey alarm or distress, or they're used to bring a flock back together. Now, what's interesting is that there's a lot of commonality across all the species in calls, and they're able to understand each other when they're in mixed groups. Uh, research came out last year, and uh, researchers found that uh, birds understand chickadees when they go chickadee dee dee. And not only do they know that it's a threat in the area, but depending on how many DDDs the chickadee does, it conveys uh, how serious that threat is. Now there's a lot of methods for remembering songs and calls. One method is phonetic units. And these are just words or phrases that mimic a sound pattern. For example, as I've already demonstrated, the chickadee DD of the Carolina chickadee, or its song, which is Phoebe Phoebe, or the white-throated sparrow, which is poor Sam, Peabody, Peabody, Peabody. So listen to this. Can you hear the poor Sam, Peabody, Peabody, Peabody? Another way that we can do this is using comparative terms describing the sounds uh, with common objects, like a field sparrow, which sounds like a ping pong ball being dropped off a table, or a black and white warbler, which sounds like a squeaky wheel, like on a wheelbarrow. So listen here to the black and white warbler. We can also use descriptive words to try to, to convey the quality of a sound. For example, we can say a chipping sparrow sounds like it has a dry trill, or a wood thrush, which sounds flute-like. Listen to this wood thrush. So how are you going to learn these? Well, there's a lot of different ways. You can go to books and field guides. And some, some of those field guides attempt to put the sounds in words. Uh, many of them have slightly different translations. So you have to be careful about these, but, but they're there. You can actually listen to sounds on recordings. There, there, believe it or not, there's CDs and there's things online, uh, websites you can go to, and you can learn the songs there. Or you can just practice. Um, so, for example, here, let me show you a couple that, that you're going to learn eventually. This is a Carolina wren, 
and it makes a lot of different sounds, but some books will describe it as saying tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. Uh, some will describe it as saying Germany, Germany, Germany. You just have to find what works best for, you, for you, your ears. So here's a, a, a Carolina Rat. And here's a chickadee. We've already talked about a chickadee. Uh, you're going to hear its song, which sounds like it's going Phoebe, Phoebe, or some people think it sounds like they're going Carolina. And then you're going to hear the warning, which is chickadee, dee, dee, chickadee, dee, dee. And in between, you're going to hear them say something that sounds like they're going, teacher's a jerk, teacher's a jerk. You probably agree, don't you? Here's the chickadee. And here's our state bird, the Northern Cardinal. You're going to hear it sing something that sounds like cheer, 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 followed by a birdie, 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 birdie. So, we're at the end of this. Get outside. See what you can find like these two. They're out there doing a point count. You're going to learn about point counts later. And they're just recording the birds that they see and they hear. And a lot of the birds, believe it or not, are out there you're not going to see. You're just going to hear them. So get out and enjoy yourself and uh, take care until next time.